These are the stories topping the news. The visions on the investigation for possible financial crimes, former National Security Minister drowns in Tobago, and Kenyan teachers strike over pay. Welcome to ZIZ's Midday Newscast for Tuesday, January 6, 2015. I am J.D. Keynes. Now for the news in detail. ZIZ News understands that an investigation is being is to be launched into the finances of Nivisions David Hendrickson and his wife Doris and Delia Evras Aquari of the United States. It has been confirmed that the Director of Public Prosecutions has applied for an investigation into the accounts of the two Nivisions and U.S. resident. Financial institutions, the SKNA National Bank, First Caribbean International Bank, Barbados Limited, Bank of Nevis, Bank of Nova Scotia, St. Kitts, Cooperative Credit Union, together with the Director of Social Security, Grace Kennedy Money Services, and Western Union are named as respondents on the application, which was filed on November 7, 2014. Speaking on Good Morning St. Kitts and Nevis, former Deputy Premier of Nevis, Hensley Daniel, addressed the application. The grounds of the application are the Royal St. Christopher and Nevis Police Force, the police, is investigating David L. Roy Hendrickson, Doris Hendrickson, both of Hamilton Estate Nevis, and Delia Evers Aquari of 31 Norwood Court, Savannah, Georgia, for violating St. Kitts and Nevis criminal laws in offense, which include the money laundering. Hmm. The first, second, third, fourth, and fifth respondents are alleged to be in possession or control of accounts in the name of these persons. Daniel said that the respondents were required to produce all financial documents of the Hendricksons and Aquari. The, the applicant, the director of public prosecutions of the Judicial and Legal Services Complex, East Independence Square Bastia in the island of St. Christopher in the Federation of St. Christopher and Nevis, applies to the court, applies to the court for the following orders. Hmm. That the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth respondents that is the National Bank, First Caribbean, Bank of Nevis, Bank of Nova Scotia, and the Singles Credit Union, the first five respondents, do produce authenticated copies of the following documents or records in relation to the numbers, the numbers of set of accounts and all other accounts, and it says they are held in the name of David Elroy Hendrickson, Doris Hendrickson, both of Hamilton Estate Nevis, and Delia Evers Aquari of number 31 Norwood Court, Savannah, Georgia, USA, whether individually or jointly, active, dormant, closed, and any other services provided for the period between October 1, 2010 to present. While very little is known of Aquari, David Hendrickson is well known on Nevis as the Chief Security Officer for the Nevis Air and Seaports Authority, NASPA, and his wife has served as a nurse for several years. ZIZ News will continue to follow this developing story. The former Deputy Premier of Nevis, Hensley Daniel, is criticizing the recent decision of Premier the Honorable Vance Amy to incorporate the Department of Education into the Premier's ministry. During the delivery of his New Year's address, Premier Amy revealed the change and said the move would ensure greater administrative effectiveness with regard to education on Nevis. This morning, however, Daniel said the decision showed the Amri administration's lack of understanding of the important role of education. We believe that education is the means by which you equip today's generation for tomorrow's possibilities. And Rex Nettleford used to say there is too much insensitivity to education in, in, uh, by, among those who lead in the political realm. And mm -hmm. he's correct. You don't think of it education. What you need to do is to get education to lead the charge. Daniel added that there are philosophical, planning, and organizational differences between his Nevis Reformation Party and the governing concerned citizens movement. He said Amri's recent decision was one such example. We'll have more on this story in tonight's newscast. The Office of the Chief Medical Officer has issued its first influenza update for 2015, citing that influenza of influenza A virus H3N2 is currently being circulated in the USA and Canada. According to the update, public health authorities in the USA are reporting a more intense 2014-2015 influenza flu season. It also stated that given the level of travel between St. Kitts and Nevis 
and North America, health officials and practitioners in the Federation anticipate an increase in influenza-like illnesses starting in January, but added that there is no need for panic. Typical symptoms of a flu include fever and chills, muscle aches, runny and stuffy nose, sore throat, cough, loss of appetite and fatigue. Residents are further advised that symptoms can be easily managed at home using paracetamol, fruits and lots of fluids such as water homemade juices, soup, and teas. Protection is provided by adequate rest, regular exercise, and a plant-based diet. We move now to news on the regional scene. Trinidad and Tobago's main opposition People's National Movement, PNM, is in mourning following the death of one of its high-profile members on Monday. Former Government Minister Martin Joseph died on Monday morning while swimming at Grange Bay on the southwestern side of Tobago. Joseph was vacationing on the island and was taking an early morning walk with friends when he decided to go for a swim. At around 8 a.m., he got into difficulty and disappeared underwater. His body was later pulled from the water by police. Investigations are underway to determine the circumstances surrounding Joseph's death. Joseph served as a member of parliament for the St. Anne's East constituency from 1995 to 2002. A St. Lucian family of two is homeless following a house fire on New Year's Eve. Residents say the fire started suddenly and consumed the wooden structure quickly. Fire officials say a quick response was not enough to save the residents. A family in OJV4 was battling to save their house from searing flames to no avail. Residents of the community say the wooden structure, which was home to a family of two, went up in flames around 10.30 p.m. on December 31st. Clifford Call says he was one of the first residents to witness the incident unfold. I went to check my partner down, down the floor down there. Once I came back, I saw one of down up by my uncle. I see, I see a little smoke coming. But I Acting Fire Chief Lambert Charles says fire officers sprung into action after receiving the New Year's Eve fire report. However, he says when officers arrived on the scene, the house was engulfed in flames. Where there was a house fire at Oje in Vieux In that situation, a small wooden structure was completely destroyed. The damage in that fire is estimated at $17,000. The call came to the fire service at 13 minutes after 10 p.m. Residents of the area say they are determined to assist the family in any way possible. On New Year's Day, they could be seen helping to clear the area. The investigation into the cause of the fire is ongoing. Internationally, Kenyan teachers strike over pay. A, new, a nationwide teacher strike in Kenya could affect 13 million students. School teachers say they want more money, but negotiations with the government have been unsuccessful so far. Al Jazeera's Hara Motasa reports from Nairobi. Gabriella and her sister Claire spend the first day of the new school term at home. She blinded me. That's because government paid teachers are on strike and public schools in Kenya are closed. An inconvenience for the seven year old who wants to learn. I'll tell the teacher, teacher, I want to go back to school and you teach us very well and don't strike again. But a nationwide teacher strike means many classrooms are empty. Some parents brought their children to school in the morning, but there weren't any teachers around, so they took their children back home. Teachers say they won't come back to the classroom until their demands are met. And this is what they want. They want their basic salary increased from between 200 and 300 percent, and they want their housing allowance increased by 50 percent. In the past, some teacher strikes in Kenya have dragged on for weeks. It's affecting the children. It's affecting the nation. So we would like, and it's my prayer, that if this strike can end the earliest time possible, the better for the children and the nation at large. I feel the two parties need to agree amicably and let children come back to school. It's their right to have education. Some teachers take home less than $300 a month. The Kenyan government says it doesn't have enough money to increase salaries. There's total paralysis of the entire education sector. And uh, taking teachers for granted for this matter is really suicidal. And it is upon the government to wake up to the reality and then uh, see that they, 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 they engage constructively. 
but for now, many of Kenya's classrooms will remain this quiet. Harumutasa Al Jazeera, Nairobi. France says it is ready to carry out strikes against fighters crossing Libya's southern border and prevent the flow of weapons to groups fighting in North Africa's lawless Sahel region. We hear more in this report. One of the many unintended consequences of the war in Libya, the French involvement in the fall of Gaddafi, has been the strengthening of rebel forces in northern Africa, routinely described in the West as Islamist. And having defeated some of them in Mali in 2013, the concern in Paris is that the increasing disintegration of Libya into rival, heavily armed factions is leading to an open supply route for weapons out of Libya and through Niger, thus rearming the same groups in Mali all over again. Consequently, France's defence minister spent the new year visiting troops in Niger, announcing that France would be buying more drones and would be constructing a new military base just outside the southern Libyan border to block the routes being taken by heavily armed fighters. We know that in southern Libya there are some very important terrorist hotbeds, the same actually that there were in Mali, the same that can be in Nigeria or elsewhere. It is a refuge. We have set up a base and I will tell you something here in confidence, if we can on the radio, maybe they can listen to us. We will strike them every time they will come out of these places where they are hiding. That's why there is this base. All the same, the most cursory look at a map shows the difficulty of policing hundreds of kilometres of Libya's borders from a single point. The French proposal is to put a new base around here, but the borders to the west and to the east are vast and unpoliced. The setup of the base is designed to take those distances into account. This is not a static base, it's a dynamic military base that can adapt according to the terrorist threat. It will have ground troops, special forces, an air contingent with drones for intelligence and to find terrorist armed groups in the different countries. France has said it won't intervene inside Libya by itself, but President Hollande suggested it would if the United Nations allowed it. The destabilization of northern Africa caused by Libya's collapse may yet lead to more international intervention of a very different sort to the one which led to the death of Muammar Gaddafi. Lawrence Lee, Al Jazeera. And now for the weather. Skies over the Federation are partly cloudy, partly sunny today, with winds blowing from the east-northeast at 20 to 30 miles per hour. This evening, we'll see clear skies and sunset will be at 5.51 p.m. And that's it for ZIZ's Midday Newscast. Join us at 6.30 p.m. on radio and 7 p.m. on Channel 5 for the major news presentation. I have been your presenter, J.D. Keynes. Have a great afternoon.